Hey everyone, so this is going to be the opening of the Neo intro pack that I said I would do in my most recent mail day. So I'm just going to kind of get into it, uh, talk about the cards as well as probably some other stuff through the video. I pre-sliced it just so it'd be easier, but this deck is fully sealed. Wrappers off, and these open from the side, like this. And hopefully the cards are all in good condition still. But we'll see as we go through. So those are the two stacks of cards, and then it comes with like this playmat thing. It's, it's a paper mat, but as well as you get a Chansey coin, some information pamphlet. This is maybe like a rule book or something, kind of telling you what the cards do, yeah. Pretty cool art as well in here. And then some damage counters and poison thing as well. That is everything that comes in there. So I will now try to carefully get these cards out of this seal. You can tear this. I might try that instead of trying to slide them out. Just try not to damage any of them. I don't know what card is on the back actually, so. Okay. Okay. Now I should be able to slide this off pretty easily. Yep. Okay, so the first card is exclusive art. I'm just going to be sleeving these as I go. So this one at the top has a little ding. Unfortunately, so a little speck of something, but yeah, back is clean, nothing really wrong with that. But yeah, first card is an exclusive art, it's Chikorita. Very cool, Hameno. Just kind of put these off to the side. Um, next, we have, I'll kind of zoom in, hold on. I think I lost the focus by zooming out, so. Um, next we have some grass energies. I won't be sleeving these. Oh. I don't know how many there are in a row here. And a fire energy, because you do get Cyndaquil in the Chikorita side as well. So there, I forgot to mention this, but there's something called the side deck as well as the half deck. Um, you can look it up on Bulbapedia, it should uh, differentiate what cards come in like the technical side deck and which come which cards come in the technical half deck um, I don't know those offhand but you can look them up for yourself so next is a bay leaf also done by Jimeno a lot of the artwork in these are done by Jimeno very nice artwork this one maybe like the tiniest thing up there but should be good to go. I will I'll putting be putting these in card savers later, but for now I'm just gonna sleeve them. So here's the Cyndaquil. So the cool thing about this is that it, it does include the fire starter, whereas the uh, VHS intro deck with the Squirtle and Bulbasaur, it completely excludes Charmander, whereas this one still includes the fire starter, which is really nice. I think the artwork is really cool on this one as well, Jimeno. So that is a, a good thing about this second gen deck compared to the first gen one. And you've probably noticed, but 
there's a big Chikorita little stamp there that lets you know it's from this set rather than from some other random product or, or main set basically as well as like you get the little thing there got a master ball I guess I'll just talk about why I'm opening this um, rather than just like keeping it sealed or whatever so I found that a lot of the times with these old Japanese products there's arbitrage to be had so I got this deck at a price point that I'm pretty comfortable cracking it grading the cards and selling them with the grades that they get and I believe I'll make more money than just selling it as is um, there are a lot of products like this um, the Neo 2 files are like that quite a quite a lot of the time if you can get them cheap enough as long as you basically grade nines on everything you're still making money on them and then tens are a pretty big upside um i guess in my most recent mail day i bought some sealed dragonite promos those are also pretty easy money as long as you don't get unlucky with like dents or anything or really bad centering issues um, the original vhs uh intro deck with scored on bulbasaur that can also be pretty easy money if you just crack it um, and grade the cards. The CD promos, the original CD promos can also be that as well. I've just found it quite a lot with old Japanese products for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why they don't seem to have the appropriate value as a sealed item compared to what the cards go for in the graded forms, but here's Guava, new artwork. Very cool. But yeah, it just it really makes no sense, but I'm going to keep taking advantage of the opportunity as long as it's provided to me. I wish the Growlithe got another unique art, but it just has the regular base set style art. More energies. More energies. As well as a coughing. I do like that. There is still the unique stamp on these cards, even if it is the same recycled artwork from other sets. That is something that differentiates them, makes them unique. This Teddy Ursa is unique, I believe. This is Sugimori. Um, but yeah, you can find a lot of the arbitrage plays Pretty often with these old back Japanese style stuff, vending series is another big one that I forgot to touch on. If you can get those sheets for cheap enough and grade the cards, it's very easy money to be had as long as you're patient. And and with the, the mindset you have to have with selling kind of these really niche cards is not auction them and just be very patient. Know that you're gonna find a buyer eventually with the correct pricing. So I'm not just gonna grade these and then just auction them and make a bunch of money. It's it's more of a buy it, crack it, grade it, and then uh, pick my price and basically remain steady at that price because there aren't a lot of these on the market and I know that I will find a, bu a buyer eventually as long as my price point isn't too outrageous. Um, so I'm not just gonna auction these because these will probably do terrible at auction compared to buy it nows because the awareness just isn't really there. I mean, I guess if awareness like really caught on with these types of stuff, then you could auction them. But in the current market, current state, I would not auction these. Um, Mag me, Mag B, very cool. I do like this one. Kind of looks like just a bunch of bubbles, getting like rainbow reflections. This one was always really cool to me. Yeah, I think this is technically the side deck that we're getting into now with the Magby and then this Geodude who's in the desert. You see the little cacti. Machop with the non-unique artwork. Then some trainers. So I'm probably not going to grade like the trainers or whatever. But I'm just sleeving them just because I'm not really sleeving the energies, but 
I'm just trying to preserve it as best as I can. Another unique artwork, Skarmory. I mean, Jimeno just kind of kills it in this product. And then, I think this is Switch Trainer. This card has a pretty cool like stamp promo variation. Um, has, I think it's like 2000, this is like 2000 or whatever. It's like a cool little uh, gold stamp on it from some some promo thing, but. Another trainer, and then there's kind of like the main card, I guess, that would be considered, but not one of the most desirable cards in the set, just because this card was printed into oblivion in the original in the original neo or not the original neo files but or i believe it, yeah the original neo file the neo file one this card like there are millions of those things printed so uh this card doesn't really get that much love but as long as you see the stamp here you kind of know what it is so some serious collectors kind of value it but um Overall, it's not really that valuable compared to the more unique artworks in this deck, uh, just because it was basically printed into the ground. But still very cool, hollow pattern. Very nice card. And then a Metal Energy. And I actually did not know this about this card, but I don't know if you can tell, but that little Chikorita is hollow, which is very cool, actually. I did not know that. It's not really focusing, but if I can, yeah, but you can tell it's hollow, I'm pretty sure. That's very cool. I did not know that. Okay, next is the Totodile deck. So let me carefully get this. Just trying not to destroy the cards. This one's being a little bit more difficult. Okay, these cards are stuck here for a little bit, but okay. So I'll just sleeve these right now. Okay, so this Mareep. Um, I don't know if this is unique. I feel like I've seen this in an English Neo set. Um, but I'm not certain. I want to say this isn't unique artwork. This is a cool card. Um, it's a Lucky Stadium. I guess if you want the full Lucky Stadium run, you also need this one. But it's not really part of what I would consider like the main sets, the main Lucky Stadium sets that people collect. But I guess technically, if you want all of them, you need this one. And again. The for alligator, this same artwork was printed in the Neophile 1 into Oblivion. Um, I wish the Totodile was hollow in this, but it's not. Also, sorry, but I feel like the camera's been out of focus this whole video, but it is what it is. Then I'll just flip these around. Get energies. Just a card here. So this is unique, I think. So the, the Mareep was not. But the Flaffy, I believe, is. It's kind of reminiscent of a similar artwork uh, in the Neo sets, like where it's kind of like a zoomed-in Flaffy, and it's kind of looking up at, into the picture. But it's not entirely the same. And it's also by... Um, Nishida, so I think it's a better artist that did this than the other one. Got Lightning Energy, Bill, I'll sleeve this I guess. Got Quilava. 
or I say quill lava, I meant quill fish. I think that's unique, pretty sure. Master ball. So you get a master ball in each one. This deck seems to be a little bit less centered than the other one, left to right at least. Um, Total Dial looks good though. Which, uh, it's off top of the bottom on this one, but. Nishida did this. Nishida and Himeno both kind of killed it in this. I like both of their early works quite a bit. And then Nishida into the EX era also, I really like. Himeno's later stuff, as she got more like digital, doesn't really entice me that much, but. Another Mareep. Another Totodile. Sorry if this video is kind of boring, I'm just kind of making sure I don't really damage these cards. And there's not really that many openings of this product on YouTube, pretty sure, so. I just kind of want to document what comes in each of these and the unique artwork that comes in it. Remoraid. Don't know if that's unique. I'm guessing it might be. Just a bunch of energies. And then Croconaw. Very cool. Yeah, the camera's definitely there. I think because I had it a little bit zoomed out, the camera was not focused, but so I'll kinda I'll go through most of the cards again. At the end, I'm just getting these sleeved up. Sugimori Hoodoo. I've always really liked this. Meryl. It is done by Nishida. Just very at peace. Meryl. Yeah, this deck is definitely a little bit more off-center. At least I've noticed. Top to bottom and left to right on some of these cards. Like This Pikachu is definitely off-center, top to bottom, quite a bit. So these cards aren't really guaranteed to get really high grades or anything. Probably cap out at nines for these really off-center ones. But top to bottom does typically get more leniency just because it's less uh, hurtful on eye appeal, I, I guess. But cool Pichu. This is Natu. And then I think this is one of the more popular cards from the deck is this Abra. Again, done by Nishida. This one's pretty well centered. It's slightly off, but definitely better than the other ones. So that's nice, because this one is pretty expensive in 10, so very cool. Uh, Gust of Wind. I'll just try to get through these, because the video is getting pretty long. Then Houndour. I don't believe this is unique. Then oh, that's interesting. So this, so the darkness energy is not hollow, but the metal energy was in the other deck, which is interesting. I honestly didn't even know the uh, metal energy was hollow. So that is the whole deck. So I'll just kind of go through them a little bit. Um, so some boring cards for sure that are just like reprinted and then a bunch of trainers and energies, but I think the unique art cards really make it worthwhile. So Abra is very cool. 
lot of Nishida, some Hameno, just really killer artwork. Just kind of go through them one by one. Another base set Pikachu artwork that you kind of have to have if you're a master collector of Pikachu, but like I, that would be awesome in a unique artwork from like Nishida, but they just went with the base set. So yeah, left to right centering and top to bottom on this one, very off. But I'll probably just grade all the unique artworks anyway. This one's pretty good. Just because I think the cards are underappreciated, as most people don't know about them. I don't know about undervalued. As long as you get the right buyer, you're probably going to get the full value that you can out of them, but... If more people knew about them, I feel like they would probably go for a little bit higher of a price than they do. Especially the sealed decks. The sealed decks are not that crazy expensive considering what everything else has done uh, over the past couple years. This one's really cool. I did not know that this little Chikorito was hollow. That's very cool. Meganium, reprinted art, just a bunch of trainers, Skarmory. Very cool, Hameno. Trainers, reprinted. Very cool, Geodude. Very cool, Magby. This Chikorita always kind of weirded me out, though, because it kind of looks weird. It looks like it should be, the mouth should be straightforward, but the Chikorita is kind of facing. But because you can't see the other eye, it looks a little off, but... I still think the colors and just the whole picture of it is really nice still. Sunkern, I don't know if it's unique or not. I believe this is unique. Teddy Ursa. Then reprinted, reprinted. This is Qualava. Very cool. I do like how they did the fire starters. They included the fire starters in here. Even though it is kind of weird like seeing the Chikorita emblem with the fire starter um Cyndaquil, but at least they're included Paris I really like this one this bay leaf with the moon in the back pretty much every card with like a moon in the background seems to get a lot of love um I like them too so I can understand why and then lastly the Chikorita so that was a pretty long video, 23 minutes, but hope you enjoyed all of the unique art and some random discussion in the middle. But yeah, I think for the price that they are, I think it's a really good value purchase and you can even make some money if you know what you're doing and the cards grade well and you're patient with uh, your time horizon on selling the cards. So I'm also not going to grade these at like $20 or PSA just introduced uh, $22. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait for bottom tier PSA pricing because um, I don't think these cards are going to crash anytime soon just because the supply isn't there and uh, the, de the demand that is there is organic in my opinion so yeah that's kind of my strategy behind this stuff um, just a cool product unique art and uh, I think if anything demand can only kind of grow for this kind of stuff but you know I could be wrong we'll see but yeah hope you enjoyed this was the Neo uh, intro deck, intro pack, whatever uh, the direct translation is, but I hope you enjoyed. That is all for now. Hopefully I'll have another video soon, but that's it for now. Thank you.